it's tomato season and I couldn't be happier. I've got the perfect stamp and the perfect stamp project with this stamp to celebrate these delicious fruits. But first, you gotta watch this. Okay, this project is really simple. It can be a little messy, it can be a little tricky, but I have faith in you. You're gonna see me make a mess, and so you have the permission to make a mess as well. When I made this stamp, I made a, a set of cards, and I sent them to my mother-in-law a couple of years ago, and it was a set of these tomato cards, just blank cards with my little tomato stamp, and then I stamped on the envelope too, and then she sent me back one really cute and look she put a tomato stamp on it tomato stamp tomato stamp I think it works the ink I'm using is Versacolor by Sukuniko this particular stamp was carved with speedy carve by speedball it's my favorite carving material it's super durable the only thing is it's not super thick so I always use some sort of mounting handle with it and I think acrylic mounts work the best for that. Okay, so for this tomato stamp, you want to carve a stamp, sketch out some designs, come up with style or design that you like, and transfer it to some rubber material and carve your stamp. You want to make sure that you leave a good enough space in between the stem and the tomato, and that may require taking a few extra passes with the blade and Test it out and make sure it's the way you like it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna, on an index card, on a blank index card, you're gonna stamp the whole stamp. Then you're gonna cut the stem away from the tomato. And this is what that looks like. And be sure that when you cut the stem away from the tomato, that you go as close to the tomato part as you can. That way you're going to give your stem enough space to be inked by the green ink and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I've got the stem, I'm going to remove that and I'm going to set it aside. So now I'm going to get ready to stamp my tomato, but before I do that, I'm going to show you. I'm using pigment inks and I've mixed up my own color because I didn't have what I wanted. I have magenta, that's a little bit too purpley, so I used some marigold ink and then I mixed it with some Narcissus, which is a beigey kind of creamy color. And I used a little gift card and a little palette knife to mix the color. And pigment ink will stay wet for a while. It has a long open time because I think it has some kind of glycerin in it or something. But I got the color to be just right. And then I used a little sponge, a little foam stamp that I created from this foam stamp pad from Ranger. And I just cut off little squares and then I'm able to make little ink pads. You know, they work. It works just for what I need because you can make it really small or you can make it really large and then you don't have to invest in an ink pad and since pigment ink does stay wet for a long time, this little ink pad will not dry out for a long time. And you can store it in a covered box of some kind, maybe a covered plastic box. You might have a collection of them. Now you certainly could use an ink pad, but this is convenient, it's easy, it's affordable, and you get a lot more versatility. You get a bigger mess with this method of mixing your own ink. It's just something to consider. It's just an, a different option for you. Now, I'm gonna tell you one more thing about pigment inks because I already said it does stay wet for a long time. You can end up getting a lot of smears on things if you're not careful, such as on this sketchbook here, on different things that I've been working on. It's It gets on your hands. So once you get your little 
ink pad loaded and you don't want to load it too heavily because you don't want it too goopy. You can always add more later, but once you get this loaded, push that away so it's not in any place where it can make a bigger mess. And then I kind of keep this on a little tray or something out of the way so I don't really make a big mess. And then of course, check your hands regularly. It is less mess when you use a manufactured ink pad, but this is economical. It's fun, and you know, we're artists. We like to get messy, so that doesn't bother us. Okay, so I have an A6 card here. It's an ivory color card. I've got my stamp, I've got my card that I'm gonna stamp, and I've got my cutout, my mask. I have my green ink ready, and I have another little backup green ink here. It's a little bit of a different color to add some interest. You could also add a couple of different colors on your tomato, but I'm trying to keep it really simple. So you have your mask. What you want to do is you want to flip it around and you want to place it directly on the stamp and you're just going to eyeball it and see where your stem is. Make sure that the stem is exposed. So I'm just going to tap some of this bamboo color on and you can see it takes a little bit of effort to get it all the way down to the tip of the stem and that's no big deal. You just want to take your time. So now I'm going to add just a little, a little touch of this lighter green because I think it's interesting. And I can see here that I don't have enough green ink on that one part of my stem. And you may have to go back in and re-trim the mask. But I think this one will work okay. I'm just gonna start adding the red. Go at an angle with your sponge. Use the corner to get into the corners. And it's not going to be perfect, but that's going to make it look really cool anyway. So don't worry about perfection. So I'm going to ink this up really well. Now I can see here that I've really got some mess going on here. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to use this number two blending stump. You could use a number one. It would be a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to roll this on my ink pad and then come in here and then just kind of give it a little bit more detail. And the thing is, you don't want to wipe the ink on to the area that you're applying it to because you won't be wiping it on, you'll be literally wiping it off. So that's why dabbing works really well. You can add a little bit more interest. So I'm going to just apply even pressure. And that looks really good. I'm going to do another one. So I'm going to re-ink this. You can, just to keep things, you know, clean, you can come in, you can clean your stamp off. It's going to save you a mess. And then make sure your hands are clean. And then we're going to do this again. So this already has some ink on it as well, so I'm just going to wipe that off too. Now I still have some residual ink on this stamp, so I'm going to mist it with water and get a shadowy impression. So I'm just going to take my water mister and I'm going to move it away from my surface and then I'm going to give it a quick light mist. And I'm going to stamp it one more time and see if I can make it look like it's a little bit of a shadow kind of scenario going on. You can maybe come in and color it in a little bit with your stump if you want. Or you could leave it.
I forgot to tell you that I did trim the A6 card down so that I could mount it on top of another A6 card to give it a little border. And one more tip, sometimes you can remove some of this ink smudges with a kneaded eraser. It depends, but it's worth a try. Just play with it, have fun, don't get stressed. It's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be messy, it's supposed to be experimental, but it's really cute, so. Listen, if you've never carved a stamp before, I've got the perfect video for you right here. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.